Welcome to the third in our three-part virtual excursions training program. My name's Jackie Randalls, and I've coordinated this program for national delivery as part of my role managing Inspiring Australia in New South Wales. For those new to Inspiring Australia, it's the national strategy for public engagement with STEM. We work with hundreds of community partners to connect scientific researchers to big audiences. And today's training is all about doing just that in the virtual world. It will be produced and delivered by Physics Education, Sydney Science Education and Refraction Media. And I'd like to acknowledge support from the New South Wales Office of the Chief Scientist and Engineer and Inspiring Australia's state programs in New South Wales, the ACT, Queensland, Western Australia and South Australia. I'd like to talk to you more specifically about Virtual Excursions Australia. So a lot of the emails and follow-up information you've been receiving has come from Virtual Excursions Australia and it's a collaborative network of content providers um, that was founded by Ben, myself and uh, Stephen Bancroft from RVR Media when we were actually at a video conferencing conference up in Queensland in 2012. We really felt that it was time to actually have a network of content providers that we could share exactly like we've been doing over the last few weeks, our tips and tricks, our fails, our successes, and how we can develop those partnerships. So it's a perfect opportunity for us to use that Virtual Excursions Australia platform to continue the conversation and continue the sharing of knowledge, and especially looking at those networks and partnerships. So Virtual Excursions Australia is a national network and what we were doing was having regular meetings um, to share information. What are we doing? What's worked well for you? You know, one organisation may have tried a particular technology, it didn't work. Another organisation can say, oh, well, with, with this tweak or this change, we had a lot of success with that. So it was a really great opportunity to share information across both government organisations, non-government organisations, um, regional, city. So all of the boundaries that we're often finding in the physical constraints disappeared when we were able to um, create these conversations. Um, one of the other things that we did was looking at events. How we can use our different organisational skill set but combine it together to promote larger events. So some of the really successful ones we ran was a program called ClickFest, which was during November, and it was an opportunity for any content provider to just give a session a go. And a lot of the sessions we would do for free or reduce prices. And what was great about it, we could promote the banner of ClickFest and any of the content providers could put sessions underneath that. So it was a really great tool for marketing that we're able to use one big event, but lots of organisations were able to deliver content within it. And the advantage of that, it wasn't themed. So a lot of the other events we would look at is SciFest that we ran during the whole of August, um, celebrating National Science Week and science uh, um, in itself. Single day events like World Environment Day, Threatened Species Day. I think we did Pirate Day. We've done Slime Day, which was a, a suggestion from Ben. And hey, who doesn't love slime? We were able to have a session where one of the scientists from the Australian Museum showed kids how to make post-it notes with leopard slugs because they're all nice and sticky and paper. So, you know, you never know what um, your organisation might come up with given a forum that you might not have expected. Um, other events, Earth Science Week, um, lots of programs for NADOC Week. We also did things um, uh, for, oh, I'm trying to think, um, linking to libraries. So the organisations that we had involved were all the way from uh, zoos, museums, libraries, art galleries, uh, community organisations, um, not-for-profits, as I mentioned, as well as non-government organisations and government organisations. So it was open to everyone. There was a real sense of inclusion and that everyone's voice um, was heard within those meetings. So it's one of the things that after this training uh, finished up, we're actually going to start a series of Virtual Excursions Australia meetings again. Um, 
everyone will be invited to um, participate in those. So at the end of the surveys we've been sending out, it actually has an option if you want to become part of the network. Um, and that's a great opportunity just to, you know, sit back and listen to what other people are, are doing. You might have a great idea or might want to suggest a program or event. Um, so we're really looking forward to being able to build that network back up again. I think we've um, been sending the link out as well for you to find the Virtual Excursions Australia uh, page. You can have a look at past events. There's also videos available to look at as well and a list of all of the current um, subscribers. So the content providers on the page are pay subscribers, but the network itself is a free opportunity to get involved. So you don't need to be a subscriber on the website to be involved in the network. Um, and so that's a really great way to follow up with everything you've been learning over the last few weeks and um, really continue um, those learning opportunities uh, with the rest of the team. So Ben, I think you've got a great example of what this can look like, these collaborations. Um, so I think I'll throw to you and you can uh, add your awesome experience. No worries. I thought you were going to say my two cents worth. But seriously, <laughs> uh, can I just say that the what happened at a Virtual Excursion Australia was really fun. At one point, we're up to nearly... 30 or 40 museums all over Australia doing all sorts of stuff and not just in science, in every single key learning area, history, art, mass, all music, the lot. There was heaps of people. Uh, I do want to quickly share you a very brief video and people who have consumed physics uh, programs before know that we tend to not show as much video. We tend to do a lot of live, uh, but it does actually help because this was filmed um, during a, Oh gosh, this was nearly eight years ago, something like that. In fact, Mike Bartlett, who you'll get to meet soon from Sydney Olympic Park Authority, was a strong collaborator with this. Karen Player was involved as one of this. It's all about a science club. And, but it didn't just involve just us presenting, it was about multiple sites. Hi, I'm Ben from Physics Education. We're a science education company that goes across the globe by video conference as well as visiting schools around Australia. Throughout term two, we are going out to several libraries with school-aged students with the help of Sydney Olympic Park to run a video conferencing science club called Leadership It's Not Rocket Science. Hi guys and welcome to the first ever video conferencing science club held in Australia. Say hello guys, how are you doing? <laughs> yep, can see you somewhat excited. Okay, so throughout this whole term, we are going to be doing science experiments. My name is Mike and you'll see me from week to week. While Ben is leading uh, you through different experiments, we'll have a bit of a chat about how those experiments might teach us maybe one or two small things about life. It's not just Mike and myself and the library people, you'll also be meeting a bunch of career people in science. I work for the Murray-Darling Basin Authority. What we do is we look after the water resources in the Murray-Darling Basin. So this week we are going to be looking at what milk is made of and what detergent can do to that. Hi, I'm Ariana and I'm here from Hurstville Library Museum and Gallery. I'm the Programs and Collections Officer and today we're actually doing a physics program. And so what are we doing here? Okay. So, have you seen any difference in the ice cream? Um, it's getting a bit thicker. Have you learned anything over the seven weeks? Oh, every reaction has an opposite reaction. What have you guys learned over the past seven weeks? We've learned a lot of different experiments and how things work. Every week we have the giants talking to us. Hi, I'm Joshua from Hurstville and I wanted to ask you, what qualities does a good leader need? Yeah, it's a very good question. Thanks for that, Josh. These days, all footballers must do some sort of study. So how have you enjoyed this program so far? I think it's been really enjoyable. We've got to meet a lot of different kids, a lot of different age groups, and uh, really excited to do all the experiments together. Science Club has given it a real higher level of learning, and the kids have had so much fun that they now know that science isn't a scary thing. Wants to be there every, every week and she'll come and she's come out of her shell, she wants to learn more, to be here and I think that confidence she'll take home with her. Why is the library doing the program? Well, 
technology is changing and so this is our chance to get a whole variety of science and speakers to come to Mount Druitt, um, Auburn, Hurstville, at, all at the same time through video conferencing and we've never done anything like this so it was a great pilot program. Just now looked at the balloon race and I thought that looked like so much fun. I never had a chance to do anything like that when I was a kid. I've had a really fun time over the last seven weeks and I hope to do it next year. Goodbye. Thank you for joining us for the Virtual Excursions Training, supported by Inspiring Australia. You can find more information and top tips on the Virtual Excursions Australia website.